My name is Professor Michael Hoffman from the Peter McCallum Cancer Centre in Melbourne, Australia. I'm very pleased today to present the results of therapy study, a randomised phase two trial of lutetium PSMA 617 Theranostics compared to carbazitaxel in patients with metastatic castration resistant prostate cancer progressing after docetaxel initial results. This is an investigator led trial performed by the ANZA Cooperative Clinical Trials Group. MCRPC is a lethal disease and novel treatments are urgently needed to improve patient outcomes. Several life prolonging therapies have already been approved to date. In this study, the comparator is carbazitaxel, a chemotherapy uh, shown to improve overall survival in men with docetaxel resistant MCRPC. This has been shown several years ago in a trial compared to mitoxantrone, and more recently in a trial compared to crossover second line novel antiangiogen therapy. The experimental therapy in this study is lutetium 177 PSMA 617, a radiolabeled small molecule which binds to, with high affinity to prostate specific membrane antigen, a cell surface glycoprotein overexpressed in metastatic prostate cancer. Uh, this enables delivery of high doses of radiation to sites of prostate cancer. Lutetium 177 is a short path length beta emitter with a half length of seven days and a mean path length of one millimeter. This results in high tumor targeting, but very limited damage to surrounding normal tissue. Encouraging efficacy and safety have been demonstrated in uh, non-randomized trials, primarily compassionate access trials from Germany where this therapy was developed. More recently at the Peter McCallum Cancer Center in Melbourne, we performed a phase two trial demonstrating a PSA response rate over 50% in 64% of men. Therapy is the first randomized trial comparing lutetium PSMA to an active therapy, carbazitaxel, in men with MCRPC progressing after docetaxel. The aim of this study is to determine the activity and safety of lutetium PSMA compared to carbazitaxel. The key eligibility are shown. Uh, men were suitable if they had progressed after docetaxel and had been reviewed by a medical oncologist as suitable for carbazitaxel chemotherapy. They must have had progressive disease as defined by a rising PSA and also a PSA over 20. Once suitable, men were registered and underwent a PSMA PET and an FDG PET. These were interpreted centrally using a quantitative criteria and all sites must have been deemed eligible uh, according to the Australian Radio Pharmaceuticals Trials Network, which performed baseline quality control. Men were randomized to receive either lutetium PSMA 617 or carbazitaxel with the doses as shown. This was a 200 patient study with one-to-one -one randomization performed in 11 sites around Australia. Men in the experimental arm underwent post-therapy SPECT CT imaging after each cycle of lutetium. And if an exceptional response was demonstrated, treatment was paused and could resume thereafter at a time of PSA progression. Uh, this is the key details of the study. We had 291 men registered for the trial and 200 randomized, almost 100 in each arm. Uh, this was a non-blinded study and there were more patients allocated to the carbazitaxel arm that did not undergo the therapy as allocated. So 16 men uh, withdrew consent or were excluded uh, in the carbazitaxel arm compared to only one patient in the lutetium PSMA arm. The primary analysis was an intention to treat analysis and we also performed a sensitivity analysis or per protocol. Uh, I'd like to focus on these ineligible patients in a little bit more detail. As alluded to, all men underwent PSMA and FDG PET. On the left, we can see a patient with low PSMA expression at all sites of disease, which constituted roughly 10% of those screened. Another 18% of those screened had adequate PSMA expression at a site of disease, but sites of FDG positive PSMA negative disease, such as this patient with widespread hepatic metastases. The primary endpoint of this study was PSA response defined by a reduction of more than 50% from baseline as per Prostate Cancer Working Group 3 criteria. Secondary endpoints to be presented today include PSA, progression-free survival, and adverse events. 
Other secondary endpoints are not being reported in this first analysis and we await further follow-up and analysis. Results. Uh, here we can see the baseline characteristics and in this table are absolute numbers, but given that there were almost 100 patients in each arm, these convert to the uh, percentages as well. So prior enzalutamide or abiraterone uh, was 91 patients in each arm or 91%. Uh, we can see that roughly half the patients in each arm had an ECOG performance status of one and half the patients in each arm had a Gleason score of eight or more. Today I'll be presenting an updated data set with a cutoff 31 March 2020, as slightly updated results compared to the abstract online, which had a cutoff of 31 December 2019. In today's analysis, we have a median follow-up of 13 months. The primary endpoint uh, there was, was met with a 37% PSA decline over 50% in the carbazitaxel group compared to a 66% decline in the lutetium arm with non-overlapping confidence intervals. That is a 29% absolute greater PSA 50 response rate in the lutetium arm. Uh, we also performed a sensitivity analysis that does not include the patients that were randomized but did not receive the treatment as per their allocated arm. And this showed a 23% difference in the PSA response rate favoring lutetium PSMA. A preliminary secondary endpoint is PSA progression-free survival. Uh, this is based on 157 of the required 170 events uh, to determine this endpoint uh, with, uh, definitively. And this shows a hazard ratio of 0 0.69 in favor of delayed progression with lutetium PSMA. There have been 71 deaths in total, and this is not analyzable as yet, and we await further follow-up uh, for the overall survival endpoint. In terms of adverse events, and this is confined to the safety population who underwent the treatment as allocated, 13% uh, incidence of neutropenia or febrile neutropenia in the carbazitaxel arm compared to only 4% with lutetium PSMA. Other side effects that were more prominent with carbazitaxel included diarrhea, change in taste and neuropathy, with regards to lutetium PSMA, we saw grade three, four thrombocytopenia in 11% of patients and dry mouth grade one or two only in 59% of men and dry eye in 30% of men. Uh, other side effects were similar uh, as shown. In terms of total adverse events, this includes uh, adverse events not shown on this slide. There were 54% grade three or four toxicities in the men receiving carbazitaxel compared to 35% in those receiving lutetium PSMA. In terms of discontinuations, only one man discontinued therapy in the lutetium arm for toxicity compared to three men in the carbazitaxel arm. The strength of this study is that it is the first randomized controlled study of lutetium PSMA, and we have selected an active and clinically relevant control arm. We have used FDG and PSMA PET to select patients who are most likely to benefit from this novel therapy. And we have unequivocally demonstrated a large difference in the primary endpoint of PSA response. In terms of limitations, we await further follow-up for the results of other key secondary endpoints, including radiologic PFS, quality of life, and overall survival. This was not a blinded study, and more patients withdrew from the carbazitaxel arm. The clinical interpretation of these results is that lutetium PSMA is a novel class of ther therapy with high activity and relatively low toxicity, consistent with the results of prior single center studies and phase two data. Lutetium PSMA appears to represent a favorable treatment option compared to carbazitaxel in a selected population with high PSMA expression. Importantly, improvements in overall survival have not yet been demonstrated and we eagerly rate the results of the upcoming phase three vision trial. We also believe that these results uh, warrant the study of lutetium PSMA earlier in the phases of prostate cancer and in combination with other therapies. In conclusion, in men with progressive disease following docetaxel, lutetium PSMA was more active than carbazitaxel with relatively fewer grade three to four adverse events 
and a PSA progression-free survival favoring lutetium PSMA. And on the basis of these results, lutetium PSMA appears to represent a new class of effective therapy for men with metastatic castration-resistant prostate cancer. There are many people to thank for the conduct of this trial. Uh, this was, uh, the study was designed and conducted by the ANZUP Collaborative Clinical Trials Group in collaboration with the NHNMRC Clinical Trial Centre and the Australian Radiopharmaceuticals Trials Network. We received valuable industry support from, with regards to PSMA 617 supply and also financial support from Endocyte, now a Novartis company, and Lutetium 177 was generously supplied by ANSTO. The study was funded by the Prostate Cancer Foundation of Australia with support from Movember, It's a Bloke Thing Foundation, and Can for Cancer. I'm supported by the Peter McCallum Foundation. And lastly, I'd like to thank the patients, their support networks, and the principal and co-investigators at all 11 sites around Australia, which are illustrated in this slide. Thank you very much.